Hey everybody, I uh, just wanted to go over the conservation of energy roller coaster problems from the original work power energy packet. Uh, you can find them on the agenda here, the week three agenda, the roller coaster packet questions with answers. Uh, pay close attention because I believe the part two of the test tomorrow is going to primarily be a roller coaster problem. So let's get started. Okay, everybody, so here we are. We have our roller coaster problem number one. Um, let me just take you through the problem, really. So, roller coaster starts here at, at position A. A certain amount of work has to be done on the roller coaster to even get it up to position B. Um, so, if you've ever ridden a roller coaster, generally this is where you're on the ride, the anticipation's building, you're, you're getting cranked up with machinery providing force. The work is being done on you to get you all the way to the top of the first hill, and then basically it lets go. So, the coaster really starts from rest up here. And then your potential energy, your height, is going to be treated for velocity as you turn into all kinetic energy. If there's a part of the roller coaster where you get all the way down to the bottom, then all of your potential has converted over to kinetic. Um, so if you know the total amount, you can solve for how fast you're going here, which is what we do throughout the whole thing. You'll see when we get into loop D, uh, you're going to end up with sort of both types of energy. You're going to have some potential because you're up at a certain height, but you're also going to be moving. So you're going to have a little bit of both here. I'll show you what to do there. And then you end up back down all the way down low at the lowest possible point. So C and E have very similar answers as you ignore friction, as we always do. And then there's some force to slow you down. Always one of the worst parts of the ride like, Ooh, where it slows down at the end. And it's, it's putting back force on you to take the energy out of you and slow you down. Um, so the way you do these problems basically is it says it is a, what is this one? Is a 300 kilogram cart. So the cart is 300 kilograms. So how you do these problems is you really first figure out the amount of work to get that cart up to the height of the first hill. Um, and then that amount of work, work is the change in energy, so the amount of work you do to get up to the top of the hill there at B, that's going to equal the total energy for the entire roller coaster. Um, so total energy is your KE plus your PE through the entire ride. So once you know the total energy, it's all in potential up here, but the total energy up here then you're going to know the energy through the rest of the ride. So first up is to calculate the work done in order to get to the top. So work is just force times displacement. So we really just got to figure out the weight, because it's a vertical problem, the weight, or 300 times gravity, 9.81, times the 45 meters for the, for the height. So if you calculate your work done, which, by the way, is the same formula for potential energy, um, we'll know how much work or how much energy you have. So let's figure out that number, 300 gravity 45. I get 132,435 newton meters or joules of energy. Now this is the energy we're gonna have through the rest of the ride. Okay, so let's start filling some stuff in. So once you figure out the work done to get up to position B, you know the total energy now for the entire rest of the roller coaster. Um, at position B, you're really all potential. We always start these where at the highest point you're not moving and then you begin to move through the entire roller coaster. So up here, your total energy is 132,435 joules, but it's not, you have no kinetic energy. You're really just at rest, ready to get started. For example, when you get down here to position C, you're going to have no more height. So that total energy is going to be in the form of KE. So we'll be able to pull the velocity out. A little trickier at D here because we're going to have both types. I'll show you what to do when we get there. And then down here at position E, it's very much the same as position C. So we have no more potential. It's all kinetic. Let's start filling in the chart here. Uh, so position B, we know total energy is 132,435 joules. So you have no kinetic energy at the top there. You're not moving yet, so you have no velocity then. So let's take a look at position C. So as you go down the roller coaster, the you know, you're really starting with no kinetic, and you end up with no potential, right? You, you start up with just potential up here, and then down at position C, you have just kinetic. So the total amount of potential is going to all become KE. So we had this much potential from the work done. Let's figure out that, of course, this is how much KE we're going to have down at the bottom. So we're going to have zero potential energy when we get down to zero height. 
and this entire number is going to shift over to one, three, two, four, three, five. It's going to all shift over to kinetic energy. So now we just have to pull the V out and figure out how fast they're going. So if all this energy is in the form of motion type energy, let's solve for the V. So what I mean is one, three, two, four, three, five joules is one half mass times velocity squared. So we just want to solve for that velocity there. So divide over by the half, divide over the 300, square root that thing, and you should get a velocity of, what did I get, 29.7 meters per second. So that means you should be going 29.7 meters per second. I got my units up there. Okay, so on to position D. What's going on in position D? Oh, we got both types. Let me make a little room here. So position D, you're not, I mean, you're at 30 meters, so you're still move. you'd be moving then because you'd still have plenty of energy from being up at the 45 meters. So this speed here, and of course, this is how we design roller coasters to make sure you can safely make your way through. Um, at position D, you have both types of energy. So this number is going to be split between some potential and some kinetic. You know, the potential, you just do MGH based on being at 30 meters. How much kinetic you have then is whatever's left of that total energy number. So do a subtraction and then do a, you know, then put it equal to the formula and solve for V once again. So I imagine we're going to slow down because we're going to trade some of this, you know, 29.7 meters per second back into height, you know, so you'll slow down. So we should get a number a good bit slower than 29.7 there. Uh, so let's see what happens. Let's figure out, based on being 30 meters up, what is your potential energy at position D? So potential energy should be mass, 300, times gravity, times 30, the height. So I think I calculated that already. Gravity, yep, 88,290. 88,290 joules. So where is the rest of the energy? You know, um, there was 132,000, so now there's only 88,000 in, in form of height. So that means you still have moving energy. You're still moving. So you subtract these numbers. So you do 132,000 subtracted by the 88,000 number, and so you end up there must be 44145 four, four, joules. So hopefully if I did my math right, those should always add up to the total. So I just, again, found kinetic energy by taking the total, minus what is still potential to figure out what is in kinetic. And then just set that equal to one half mv squared. So you set that equal to, so four, four, one, four, five equals one half 300 v squared and solve for that v again. So when you solve for that v, you do get a slower speed, which should make sense. Again, you traded some of that speed at c for height again, so you slow down. So if you take the square root there, this time I get 17.2 meters per second. So in the loop, you're doing 17.2 meters per second. Let's put the other numbers where they go. So basically how you solve D once again is you do the math to find PE. So 88,290, MGH. Then whatever's left, these two columns always have to add up to the 132,000 number. So you do a subtraction, and that's how you find that 44145 four, number. Set that equal to 1 half mv squared, and you'll find the velocity then, you know, in the loop. Then after the loop, you get basically down to the same scenario as position C there. So whatever you have for C is going to match with E. You're going to be down at your lowest point at E, so you're going to have no potential. So the total energy must now be in the form of moving once again. And then you set that equal to 1 half mv squared. And since the math is going to match, you're going to be back up to 29.7. Now, something to be careful of in real life is there is a lot of friction and air resistance and things. So, of course, we do all of our problems with no air resistance. You know, So in real life, if you were going 29.7 meters per second here, and then you go through a loop with all that friction involved and everything, there's no way you'd be going you know, 29.7 here again. There's just too much frictional forces robbing you of energy. Uh, anyway, that is a roller coaster problem. You see, oh, let me finish out the last part. One sec. Okay, and last part here. The last part asks about what happens at position F. 
what I don't love about the way we drew the coaster is we have position F up a little bit higher and we don't tell you that height. So if we could just kind of please almost just pretend like F is at the same height. Um, Cause I really, I'd have to make up a height and that would make it a lot more complicated. Really what I just want to talk about is what has to happen at the end. Um, when you get to the end here, you should minus friction, you know, you should have this much energy as you approach point F and they got to take it out. So a lot of times they will bring you to a higher height to take some of that velocity out of you. And then they put on those brakes to then slow you down. Um, so you really need to lose all of this energy to come to a stop. So basically how much work has to be done is that much minus that amount of joules. So work equals force times displacement. That last part wants to know how much force is going to be exerted on you if that takes place over 15 meters. So really the amount of work is that you need to lose the 132, 435 with some force over 15 meters. So basically divide both sides by 15 and you realize it is a backward force of 8,829 newtons. Uh, and that's that part where they put some force on you backwards to slow you down to, to end the ride. So that is a full roller coaster problem. Uh, try the second one and ask some questions. See you later.